Most of them are, are vessel forms, although I am going into purely sculptural pieces now. And I keep getting drawn to the vessel form, even though I get a bit off the track sometimes, because I think it's such a beautiful legacy of ceramics to, that we know and it's such familiar territory. And I think they're just always beautiful, generous forms and they could contain or hold something wonderful or just interesting pieces to look at and the elegance and beauty of them. And then I just embellish them. So they're like growing forms, they're growing on their own. Uh, usually I start with a basic form and then they, I build up from there. There's a certain point where the plan kind of goes and then it just becomes an intuitive thing and I just try and get a balance or a shape or decide where I'm going to put, say, the figure or how I'm going to place the hands or that sort of thing usually comes at the last minute while I'm making them. The new work is based, it is yeah, quite subjective, quite um, personal. They can be all be seen as different manifestations of myself and my own feelings and particularly Gro Finn's The Little Mermaid over there. She was one of the first figurative pieces I did and she's, I called her Gro Finn's, which is based on a Captain Beefheart song. Um, and the person was singing about, you know, if you don't behave yourself and you don't clean up your act, I'm going to grow fins and swim off with a mermaid. And that was kind of a bit of quiet relief for that person. And I think sometimes just to disappear into the water and just dissolve, I think that's a lovely thing to do. And a lot of my works, I think, are about dissolving back into nature or a Daphne-type figure that's growing back into growing roots out of her feet or hands and sort of becoming um, a part of the water or the earth again, which is quite a lovely feeling, really. I think I've always been drawn to um, the natural environment. Um, my very early years were more in a city, but then my family, like a lot of aspiring young families at that age, uh, at that time, moved out to the burbs and unmade roads, you know, gutters, like, you know, the new housing estate, you know, that sort of thing. There was still, like, frogmouth owls that used to sit outside the kitchen window and blue-tongued lizards under the porch and, you know, we were just surrounded by, you know, snakes and wallabies and hares and they were everywhere. And, and I think there's a lot of subliminal stuff that kind of comes out because of those early influences. And this was done at a time, this is an older piece, and done at a time when I was particularly enamoured with pre-Columbian history. It's like a sacrificial urn. So it's like based on um, the pre-Columbian jaguar and the big uh, senses, the big incense burners that they used to have in the temples at the time where the sacrifices were made uh, to appease the gods and help to uh, get rid of the horrible stench of the dried blood and the corpses, I'd imagine, too. Right. And I started getting into pierced pieces about that time, too, because I like that play of just the branches and twigs and being able to see light through it and the inside and the outside of the piece. I think that's quite interesting. That adds another dimension rather than just being a big blob. They often say truth is stranger than fiction, but I think fiction is pretty amazing sometimes too. And all my things are based on real things, but I think they're, they're depicted in quite a fantastical way. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, on par with Andre's work, I think too, they are sort of based on mythological characters and um, dreams and all kinds of fantasies, but they all come from humans too. They're all man-made. They're all, even fantasies are man-made.